Be what you can see. Feeling proud of where you live, your community, family, and having hope for the future can make all the difference. Whether still at school, heading off for your first job, or just surviving day to day, where you get support and inspiration from can make all the difference. In this series of podcasts, we get to hear stories of pride, hope, and aspiration. People that have made a difference. Stories of bravery. Dreams coming true. And what a sense of community looks like. I'm here with Melissa from Arts Nexus. And I'm here with Matt, who is from Cairns Safer Streets. And we've ended up together in this project <laughs> somehow. <laughs> blind leading the blind. Oh, we're learning as we go. <laughs> No, but I mean, for me, it's it's been really really fun. Like working and uh, working in the area of uh, the catchment area of Can Safer Streets, the the three M's. Uh, just understanding the resilience of the community, and it is a vibrant, fun community to uh, live and work in. What I've liked is this concept of showing people what they can be, because human beings be what they see. So it's important to show good role models. It's important to inspire people through deeds, not words. So I'm really happy to be part of this really exciting project and working, and frankly, working with you. I don't mind saying that. Ah, there you go. Uh, and that was a bit of a surprise, us coming together like, from such different worlds, and here we are mm. yeah, with the same passion, really, for community. Yeah, quite, mm. Mm. quite. Just with the, uh, you say three M's because we're making an assumption here. We're from Cairns. A lot of people kind of assume they know what three M's are. Uh, can you explain what that actually is and what that community looks like? Because it's a unique community, right? Hmm. Vibrant. Three uh, M's are the Manura, Ma- Mananda and Murable areas. Say that quickly. <laughs> I-, I dare everyone out there to say that quickly. Uh, and uh, look. They are areas, look, speaking frankly, they, they are areas where there are some social, social economic issues. There's no dancing around that fact. But for me, uh, they're not definitive of the place or yeah. the people. And that's the whole thing. Like, uh, look, I understand where people are coming from this on Mel. Like, seriously, because the, the way the human brain works is, is through heuristics. That is to say, you see a symbol of something and then you kind of like, oh, well, then, you know, that's that area. So you'll associate, what that means in practice is you'll associate you'll associate something with the triple M's. And, you know, most people don't associate positive things with the triple, with, you know, with the triple M's. And it's not that there's nothing to that. Again, like the place is not, is not perfect. We, we can't dance around that. There's a reason that um, can Safer Streets are there. But again, it's not indicative of the people. It's just, yeah. it's just not indicative of the people. It's not indicative of the area. And there is a real culture of, because, you know, I, I work there. Like, I'm there every day. There is a real culture of decency. There's a real culture of concern. Uh, and people really are doing their best to pull together and and make the place that they live in a, a better place. And that's all we can do as humans, yeah. really, Mel, is, like, do our incompetent best. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, so for those that have never been to Cairns or seen the brochure, you'll know the Esplanade and the fancy resorts. And if you go back, I'm going to say three streets away from that Esplanade, you'll find the real Cairns. And you go back another suburb, which is where you then start getting this group of M suburbs that they all talk about in real estate and they'll tell you to avoid it. Mm. It's, It's a common like you say, um, iconic uh, go-to, whereas actually I personally have had the privilege of sitting in kitchens and on verandas, in backyards, in many homes, and all I've ever experienced is actually that sense of, um, yeah, go to people that the community are knitted together they understand who each other are the interculturalness of that community it's no one dominant culture over the other it's a real tapestry of um the the first nation communities the island nation first nation communities then you've got the what i call the pioneer communities alongside the migrant communities and they're all together working and living 
and yeah, sure, complex social issues as let's label yep. it like that, I think comes anywhere you live. But the difference in a community like this is there's an open door, there's an over the fence, how are you, there's a down the street, they recognise each other, there's a, a sense, even when you go to the local supermarket, that's the sign for me. When you go into somewhere like that and you see like a dally of food, of cross-cultural food, you know that where you where you are. And, you know, I don't find that in the more affluent um, communities. They've got very closed doors high fences they they pull up the the garage door drive in close it and then that's it they're in their private worlds and it's um yeah a very different sense of place and community so i'm very excited to pull some of these stories out with you i'll be producing them so i'll be behind the scenes you're introducing me to people you've met and uh, together with a couple I know, and we're going to find out some really incredible stories of what people really are doing mm. that you may be unaware of, but they're there and they're doing it. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's these quiet little engines of society where, where people are, are, are out there. Um, and, and I think one of the conceptual frameworks that, that, that we're kind of touching on here, though we haven't articulated it clearly, is among us. That is to say that there are these amazing people who are among us you know, BP, the quiet achiever, going around just doing just doing their thing, yeah. and they're doing it you know, a lot of times not for recompense. I mean, some of these positions are paid, but some of them are not. They're doing it because it's the right thing to do, and it's mm. because people, um, you know, when when you serve the community, you serve yourself, yeah, because you're part of that community. Like these mm. two things are not mutually exclusive concepts. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a, one thing that it's very hard to explain to people that don't have a sense of civic mm. contribution. They don't understand what you get back they think that you're only giving and they have no idea of how it feeds your own soul but we're going to hear stories about um, a music healing project that came out of a massive trauma that was that affected the country we even had the prime minister here for that you mm. know like it was an incredible moment of um camaraderie through trauma i don't know what you'd like to say but how you name it but anyway then we've got people that have risen up and created their own business and work within the community and carry out their own dreams we've got others that work for agencies like yourself but actually have a passion for their community and that's why they do that job what other ones have you i mean there's some that we won't get on this recording but you'll hear in the future mm. so yeah it's amazing yeah see that's it i mean this idea of shining the light on people in the community that are um, not working in darkness. That that wouldn't be a good way of articulating it. But but perhaps not not getting the degree of recognition that arguably they deserve. Mm. And you can tell a lot of a lot of these people when you, when you speak to them, yeah. um, they're actually not doing it for recognition. You know, it's this idea of the left hand should not know what the right hand is doing. Oh, they'd almost die if they did get recognised. I know that because I'm Indeed. often the one nominating people for like you know person of the year or the woman of the year, for, you know, through council or mm -hmm. whatever, and usually they have no concept that anyone's even really noticed. They don't do it for that. They do it because they, It's the right thing to do. And they don't have a choice. So. And on that I would suggest that if you ever see in your community a little project advertised like a series of workshops or come and be part of a parade or a festival and you go, oh, no, nah, that's not for the likes of me. I really recommend you just get out of your comfort zone, go and have a look, see what it's about and have a go because you just don't know what happens as a result mm. or who you'll meet. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it sounds trite, but because this was music, like you said, there was this music-related aspect to what we're doing and there was that discussion about um, uh, USA for Africa, you know, we are the world. Mm. And um, honestly, it's... It, Michael, that anthem that Michael Jackson wrote just nailed it. Like, there's a reason that that resonated all over the all over the world. Yeah. And uh, you know, the line that um, we're saving our own lives. What? Well, and we're not islands. At, at the end of the day, even if you can feel, and this is where we talk a little bit about the the one percent of the community that feel quite above us. You know, that they're in their own castles and kingdom, but they only got there through their own 
journey in their own resilience and all the role models around them and mm. the privilege of opportunity that we we talk about mm. uh, and it's not even the right school but the right first job and then the right boss that then takes you to the next level that then you get to pay back like it's never in isolation it's never one thing it's a whole life journey and yeah I'm inspired every day by this community and I'm just feel so honored that we get to uh to find some stories and share them so and, thanks Matt and totally totally on that too actually you know it, it, it's funny the nature of inspiration because you can have like when we talk about inspiration we always talk you know in the positive sense so you see a role model uh, you know, be what you can see. You see a role model and you follow who that person is. But you know, I've kind of seen that there's the the negative, well, when I say negative, it's got all these implications. So people become reactionary. I suppose the reactionary mindset is better. They kind of like see something and go, you know what, I don't want to be like that. Mm, the opposite way, yeah. yeah. That can work too. You know, and they're the circuit breakers. Mm. Those people are actually the circuit breakers. Yep. And I've, you know, I saw that in my in my former job, and as you, as you know, I'm an ex-copper and uh, served up here disproportionately in, in the far north. And yeah, we we do have an understanding that people are influenced by environment, and people are influenced by this. You know, of course, yeah, no one no one argues that. But the people that I always found personally most, I suppose, in, I don't want to sound, you know, but I do mean inspiring and interesting are the people that were in these circumstances and who, like if you went and spoke to a sociologist, would say, well, you know, this person, you know, their outcome is almost determined. Yes. Because we've got this deterministic idea yeah. of how people are. The people who looked at that, and, and I know quite a few of them, a couple of them actually I know became coppers, um, just went, you know, I saw that life. I understand where people were coming from. I have a deep empathy with, you know, with the people in that environment because I am of that environment mm. but I decided to make other lifestyle choices. Yeah. It's these reactionaries that I find the most interesting people. And I think that goes to really the heart of the education system where I think the first filtering happens and the inspiration of, you know, one particular teacher that may impact you for mm. life. And it'll just be that or a significant adult, we talk about that. A significant adult can have an impact on a child mm. and they might have only spoken to them for, let's say, 10 minutes. Totally. And that, like you say, circuit breaks. And the other aspect of that is that hope. Where does hope really come from? Um, and it's a little bit elusive. It, there's no real way to say for any one person it's the same. But that idea of being able to look beyond your circumstance and, and keep going until you reach that hope and I feel that yeah again school often is a challenging institution for young people we know that now with um, acknowledging different it's not even just mental health but circumstances mm. you know do you have the support around you do you have a network that are, that will give you your first reference mm. so you can get that first good job that's not your family you know, how do you get that? And so, again, I feel that we're going to talk a little bit about role models and not people that stand up to be a role model. They're just influencers, really, aren't It's they? their character. Because all of yeah. these things, fundamentally, it comes down to character. Yeah. yeah. Because you can, um, you know, character really can be developed. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure, we all have predispositions to do things. Yeah. Like, without revealing too much about myself, some of the predispositions I have, are, you know, would, would shock a priest. But like, mm. um, again, we can, we really can transcend those things. Yeah, and I've got a metaphor I, I've just recently come across and I tweaked it a little bit and it's the idea of you and I are watching the same race, let's say the Iron Man or something, yeah, whatever. and you're watching that guy cross that line first and the achievement of an elite athlete getting mm -hmm. there and I'm watching the Paralympian at the end. Yeah, yeah. And for me, that was the moment. Same race, yeah. different outcome, and yet together it creates the same human condition, achieving your goal. Totally. Yeah, and I just think, wow, if we could just acknowledge the various differences. Like you say, sometimes the most inspiring person is the one that's come from the furthest yeah. to get to where they want to go. Totally. And that might not be the same achievement that you and I are hoping for, but they got there so yeah look that's um we're we're 
looking forward to this and I hope you hang around and listen to some of these amazing stories and learn a little bit more about what this 3M community actually is. Mm. And, uh, yeah, thanks to Cairns Safer Streets for giving me a call and Arts Nexus Studio. We love to enable community stories and we've been given the opportunity through the Cairns Tropical Writers Festival that honours stories and particularly community-based stories and we look forward to being able to uh, share more. And, of course, the biggest thanks go out to the people from the community who uh, who participate. So, like, um, yeah. I mean, are we creating the structure? Yes. Are we creating opportunities? Yes. Uh, is are the people who are participating like they're the most important yeah. so totally spot on yeah and you may wonder if you're watching the video you'll see behind us this incredible uh, record collection and that's because again another community organization the cairns fm community radio has uh lent us their studio today so that we can actually do these recordings and uh we've found ourselves in this beautiful archive of music surrounded mm. and uh yeah music can save lives <laughs> as many others. So thank you very much, Matt. Cairns Safer Streets is a multi-agency, co-located group of state government representatives delivering innovative projects through community and whole of government partnerships. We have developed a place-based approach in Cairns West, enabling innovative strategies addressing complex social issues. Thank you for listening to Be What You Can See. Thanks to our partners, Arts Nexus Studio, and Cairns Tropical Writers Festival. I'm asking.